Hey guys, Thirsty Thursday, we're here. Tonight's show should be fun. We've got the Pete Monster review. We've got the old brown, the new bottle as well. We've got a little blind tasting to talk about our topic tonight. What is ABV? How does it affect your scotch? What are you gonna buy based on ABV? And guess who's gonna visit tonight? Dr. Scotch, stay tuned. What's going on, guys? Hey, guys. Scotch for Dummies here. What Welcome are you doing? to Thursday Thursday. Guess who is not here? We're missing a couple of guys, but we've got a nice guy here across the street. Say hi, Brad. Hey, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> Brad is going to help us tonight with the show. We've got some fun stuff in store for us. We do. Dr. Scotch is going to visit. It's been he a is. while. It should be fun. It should be fun, yeah. So, welcome. What do you guys whiteboard. got going on? What do you got in your glass? We've got, I know you and I are drinking this SMWS. What are you drinking? I'm actually there? drinking some Johnny Walker... What is that, Land of the Fire or oh, Song fire. of the Fire? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's their attempt to kind of, I, I don't know if they're trying to do more of the of the, um, the Lord of the, or <laughs> Game of Thrones, but it's a little. I think it is kind of the Game of Thrones but thing. It, it's, I mean, it's actually a fairly decent bottle. You know, I was worried about it being like uh, <laughs> Fireball, <laughs> cinnamon whiskey, but it's not at all. It's just got a little, little bit of smoke in it, just a good time to. As soon as you say uh, Game of Thrones, I think of Highland Park, where they've named everything after a Viking. Oh, don't That's don't true. get us started on that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole another debate. Figuring out that whole uh, distillery and what they're going, what they have going on. But you you like this one? You you were talking about um, just the flavors, and you got banana, which is, you said was a first for you on this. It, it was. I mean, it, obviously, this is the first time I've had the scotch. Um, I am a rookie. Um, I, I just got started in the in the scotch in the scotch journey and um, kind of learning my way and, and, and figuring my and my ways out. But um, high ABV to me, you know, super super hot on a palate. Uh, threw a couple of drops of water in it, and I started to get some some spices. Interesting. And it finishes with a uh, kind of like a, a, a caramelized, maybe a banana Foster's. Dude, he's, um, he's, he's getting, growing up. He's getting he's big on us. He's not a newbie anymore. He's not a newbie anymore. Oh yeah, I am too. Don't, don't <laughs> let him lie to you. But that's really cool. That's going to be segue perfect into our discussion tonight about ABV and and how water affects it. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. But you know what? Let's see who is online tonight. So Tom R is on. One lost cause. Can't wait. Jimmy T. Hey guys, what's going on? Bobby J. Bobby J. Woo -hoo. Greg Lewis is in the house as well. DB is she. Trooper Henry. Oh, Scotch Down Under. Good day, mate. Good day. Good to see you. Mount Minion's on and uh, Brianne Porter. Missed you on the pre show, Brianne. Who else do we have on here? Bob H is on. And Eric Wait. Good to see you, Eric. Good. Glad you can join us tonight. Bob H said fire pit night. I agree. It is, man. It's so nice outside. Absolutely. You walked over. I'm like, yeah. gosh, this is a great night for a fire. It's like pit. I, I'm, I'm going to skip your invitation and just light a fire in the backyard. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. Yeah, exactly. What's going on, Trooper? Glad you were able to make it tonight. All right. So, Sunday evening scotch. We are drinking the 7.233 in celebration of Spaceside Festival. Yeah, or they are. I'm not drinking that yet. You're not drinking it yet? It's probably smart not to drink it right away yeah, because that, it's... Don't start with castrin because then it all goes downhill and Dr. Scotch it, it goes really It punches really you right in the face. So, well, we should probably kick off the podcast and get going here. You ready? You guys ready? Like this. In three, two... What's up, guys? Hey, guys. It is Scotch for Dumb. Four guys in the Scotch journey to help you with your next Scotch purchase. I am Drew. I'm Andrew. And this is... Brad. Hey, Brad. Hey. Mark and Sean are absent tonight, but Brad's here across the street. We're going to help us tonight with our show, our topic... We're going to talk about Pete Monster, we're going to talk about ABV, we're going to talk about blind tasting, all kinds of stuff, and Brad is going to give us his opinion, and against maybe you, Andrew, the professional over here. Well, so so the, the professional doctor. versus the rookie. <laughs> the, we're, the world's okayest doctor. The world's, that's a funny shirt. It's a great shirt. <laughs> okay. yeah. um, so let's talk about, Andrew, let's talk about the uh, Pete Monster to review this week. So I just poured an old, the rest of an old Pete Monster. Oh my gosh. So um, the review this week was the 2019 version. It's the painted bottle of Compass Box Pete Monster. And 
I think our initial impression was that it wasn't as good as the old brown bottle that we had. And we didn't, and when we did the review, we didn't. I didn't. I forgot that I had this bottle. The, there's just we had just a little bit left of this peat monster to, to of the old brown bottle peat monster brown label to see um, if it's what it's like. And so what I wanted to do is I want to bring it tonight. Maybe we can do a little bit of discussion with it. But peat monster itself is. I mean, the, I had this bottle for a long time, but I kind of was savoring it because it's one of my favorites. I mean, it is, it's technically, you know, what is a, um, a blended malt whiskey. It is not, um, they don't tell you, technically tell you where it's from, but I mean, on their website, they, you go through and do it. Um, but it's just, it's a really good blend. It's got richness, it's got flavor, it's got a balance of the, the sweet peat and the earthy peat, and it's just, it's just a, a fantastic bottle. Well, they're, they're both good bottles. I think we ended up giving the new bottle, um, we'll call it 2019 version, with the, uh, the the nice printed label. Um, I think we end up giving this one a 2.125. I think I gave it a two and I'm not sure what you gave it, but um, just from, if we're comparing it in against the old one, I, for sure the 2007 bottle is by far a huge difference. I can smell the difference from here probably. I mean, I can just, you can. So, so much more peatiness in that. And I remember tasting it uh, about three three weeks ago, you brought a little bit left over of this. And I think that if I don't, if I remember correctly, there's no Lechegg in the new one, and there's no Ardmore in the new one. Yes. Um, and I think they uh, gave it more, I can't remember now, more Laphroaig? Is that what it is? 65% versus 64% yeah. or something like that. So it's missing a few, but I'm really interested to get in here and see. Yeah, so if, if I if I go into the uh, the brown label Pea Monster, I get a, um, a richer, kind of creamier, um, uh, uh, mouthfeel in it. I see that we're getting some comments on, on the audio, but um, I, I think the um, the newer version it's a little lighter, it's a little brighter, but it doesn't have the rich you know creaminess that the old one had. Now, and, and we can we, we're tasting them side by side here, so it's a pretty a pretty fair comparison, I think. Now, admittedly, the, the this bottle has been open for a while. It's not not a new new bottling, so. We have to take that into account, but I, I think um, they are definitely relatives. They're definitely not. Um, wow, um, there's a big difference in the nose. Yeah, I'm so, getting. So I'm getting more. Cre so I'm getting on the old brown. It's it's richer, creamier. Like is there more vanilla or is it more um, like sherry or I, I don't remember the bottle or the barrelings of these. It's it's like. More flavor. I mean, it's just missing some flavors in the new one compared okay. to the old one. It's probably, uh, you know, I don't know. If it's, it, it, is sugar. Little, it is slightly darker. I don't know if there's more barrel influence there that maybe maybe they, they've got into it. But admittedly, maybe they just weren't as able to get to as good a cask as they did on that first. Um, the nose is bottling. significantly better on the old versus the new. Yeah. I'm going to go for a quick taste here. Some more, I got more butter and things in that. <clears throat> oh, butter for sure. Creamy butter. Um, just a little bit of musty, maybe, yeah. A little bit of musty. Um, <clears throat> more vanillas. The, the, the nose is just... The nose on the new one, on the painted, uh -uh. painted bottle. The one that has a picture of the monster. Now, mm. we, we were doing a, a live pre-show mm -hmm. that... Um, one of the guys had a 10th year anniversary of the Pete Monster. It's still this painted bottle, but it's from like 2013. So, um, Tom R had it, right? Yeah, Tom R had it. And I don't know if he was going to be able to do it because he had the old bottle as well. So it'd be interesting to see, uh, you know, Tom R, I want to see some comments coming through on the, the feed here. What did you think of the comparison between the, the, the 2013 and the old brown bottle you had? Well, interesting to see what your thoughts are on this too, because I mean, the, don't get me wrong. The new peat monster is still delicious. It is, it is good, but it's. Uh, I, I, I think I said it. it yeah, I, I. It's it's a medicinal sweetness. It's like there's. It's nice, but it's it's missing that richness that the old one has. It had. It's a yeah. creamy so, butter in the old one. So this is old and this is new. Yes. The, yes. To, to right so hand is old, for a newbie, it's like a molasses sugary. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In this one, and this one's missing that. Are they both so totally. easy? In, in my opinion. It should be. Yeah, and, and the... 46. Yeah. Yeah. They're about, both, both about the same ABV. 
Now, old and new is relative because I don't think I don't know that the whiskey is any older. It's just an older bottling, an older version of it. It's definitely smooth. Yeah. There's yeah. definitely more flavors in the old versus new. It doesn't again, if if we're comparing, which is what we're technically doing. That's exactly what we're doing. Um, if you've never had the brown bottle before and you're this is your first entry level, it's still very good. But I think that um, I mean, let's talk about what what do you think the reason for this is? What do you think they dropped Lecheg and Ardmore and mess with the uh, the, the percentages a little bit. Is it is it to get more? I mean, most people are probably going to say it's because of last lack of casks or you know volume or whatnot. Could it also be more of a uh, different recipe to help invite people into the peat world? I don't know because it loses a lot of that sweet and creaminess that that will bring a bourbon drinker in. I think than the other one. Um, so having the two here, Brad, which, and, and let's talk about your background a little bit. So you're, you're new into scotch. I am new you've, into you've scotch. You've had a little bit, but since you've moved into our neighborhood, what, six months ago? Ah, uh, yeah, six, seven months ago. You, you've uh, met us, and obviously we've kind of influenced you a little bit. You've been on the show once. You've, you, you, you've influenced the peer pressure. <laughs> well, it's twist, not peer pressure your arm a little No, no, bit. no, it's peer pressure. <laughs> but anyway, you, you've come from a background mostly bourbon. Yes, correct. And so... Speaking to Andrew's point, what do you think about, like, if, obviously we're comparing, we're giving you a little bit of, of bias by, by, based on our deci decision here, but, you know, coming from somebody brand new and just buying the new bottle, and you also, to be fair, you also like the Ardmore, you like the peatiness that you've had I a do. couple of times. So yeah, what you are your do. thoughts on, on that? On, on these two, uh, specifically this one, uh, which I think is the old one. Yeah, the brown bottle. Um, the brown bottle. Mm -hmm. I got a lot more sweetness. I got I got a lot more almost molasses uh, okay. kind of yeah I could see that kind of thickness to it if that makes any sense sure uh, and again I'm a rookie so I, I, I'm by no means Scotch burst um, but this one was definitely sweeter. This one it was almost like it was missing something. It was kind of I mean, I don't want to knock it because it, it's a good tasting scotch, but it, it was almost medicinal compared to this one. Yeah. Because this one yeah. did have that, that kind of buttery, creamy, molasses sweetness to it. This one just lacked that aspect. So, but, um, yeah, I mean, I that's, that, that's my opinion. I, admittedly, I think the peatiness is probably comparable. Yes. I, mean, just, I didn't notice just, anything it, different in the... It has the, another layer in the, in the old brown bottle. Yeah, it's like, so? as far as smoky or peaty, I mean, I think they're, they're, they're the same there, but this one was definitely sweeter. Um, so... So, so Nurse's Shaving World um, commented that they ruined Pea Monster for me. Why would I want to go out and buy the subpar one? Well, that, that, I mean, that's a fair point, but uh, what I don't want you to think, I mean, number one, you can't buy the, the old brown bottle anymore. It's gone. It's, it's almost gone if, if you can find it. But the Pea Monster is not a bad whiskey. I mean, no. it is. Is that it's what this a, one it's is? In a more, mm -hmm. um, it's in a core range. I think it is. Um, and a, and it's, it's one of their better peated, I think. Compass Box doesn't do a whole lot of really heavily peated whiskey. So that Pea Monster is a really rich uh, uh, offering to, the, to, their, to their lineup. So, but yeah, I mean, it's, it, well, okay. So I would liken it to... Um, a year or so ago, we did a comparison of the 1980s versions of Dewar's and um, Cuddy Sark and compared them to the new ones. And the new ones don't have the punch. They're not as rich. They're not as creamy. They're not as powerful as the, as the ones from the 80s. It doesn't mean you shouldn't buy them. It just means that they've changed their formulation over time, which is natural because uh, whiskey is a natural it's thing. Yeah. It's, not a, it's not a static thing. You can't synthesize it. You've got to take it out of the grain and out of the fermentation and out of the distillation and it's just a matter of time over time what we're doing here is we're comparing the evolution of the peat monster over time and i would like i personally would like them to bring some of those sweet uh sweet notes back in to the peat monster but that may not be the direction they're wanting to go it almost i mean justin oh mentioned he thinks the loss of ardmore really hurts the new peat monster i don't know i don't know ardmore enough to give it i think i may have, i may have tried it before but honestly i don't remember it mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've had some lechegs and but I, I think the uh the recipe is quite low in lechegs but ardmore is a little higher i would say that it's it's it, again i'm comparing it to the old i do really like the old one i, I think it's missing something i wonder I wonder what you could technically add to that to, 
to give a little bit of what's missing out of the, the old one. You know, maybe oh. maybe Lagavulin or, or something to kind of give it a little bit of that molasses, something to kind of help tone I'm it down. I'm thinking like the Oogadale. Just maybe a, a couple Oogadale. drops of Oogadale. Maybe. Creamy, creamy and sweeten that up. Maybe. So but, that's, that's something to consider. Yeah, because like that's something I've never done. Is I've never blended. And some people pods. do that. Oh, lots of people do it. Yeah. Because they, they, want, they want to find their perfect whiskey. Question though, if you blended the Oogadale with either one of those, wouldn't you get more of a smoky, um, like you said, like peaty smoke flavor to that versus that sweetness? Because to me, smoky well, and sweet. Kinda... True, but but Oogadale has a lot of sherry influence into it. Okay. So that sherry influence. So this is a, a heavily peated whiskey anyway. Right. So right. Adding that sherry influence might bring that up. I don't know. I've never yeah. experimented. I've never experimented with that. That'd I was just great, curious. Yeah. That'd be a great experiment. I got a bottle of Ugadel. Want me to go grab it? <laughs> you got a bottle? We got our big ten back there. I'm, I'm sure you do. I'm um, sure you yeah. do. Alejandro says he thinks Lachetic actually contributes the most difference, differences between them. So, I, yeah, yes and no. But at the end of the day, if we were not comparing, I still think that the new Pete Monster, and I mean, let me ask this question straight to Brad. Sure. Going, going to uh, buy something not so much on the Pete side, like the mm -hmm. Ardvik, et cetera, would you consider buying this in a liquor store? What's the price? 80, 75 bucks? I think? Yeah, it's on that 75 Honestly, this, this reminds me of... I, I, I own five bottles of scotch right now. I own um, a... Um, what's the, the monkey? Monkey shoulder. Monkey, monkey shoulder. shoulder. I own a naked grouse. I own an Oogadale, a um, Macallan 12, and um, now there's another one out there somewhere. Um, Highland, the Highland Park, the okay. Viking Honor. Yep. And this, wow. to me... Reminds me more of a monkey shoulder than anything. Monkey from, shoulder. Yes, from what from what I from what I taste, because it's it it's light. It does have that that peat aspect to it, but it's it's a very light scotch. It's not heavy. It doesn't. That is true. It, it's not. Once once I start getting in for me, and again I'm I'm a rookie. Once I get into a naked grouse, I start getting into more honeys, more and more vanilla, and, and more vanillas and more okay. sherries. Yeah. It starts opening it up. That to me, you know, would I buy that? It all depends on the price point. It is a good scotch, yes. Based on the older version, um, if you were comparing them, I would say no. The older version to me was much sweeter, um, had a, a whole lot more molasses, more sweetness. Um, it was almost like this one was trying to get there, but was just missing something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, mean, right. it, I, would, I would consider it, I absolutely. Mean, I, I would say this Pete Monster, you're very right. This Pete Monster is light. Very it's light. Bright. It's bright. It's a, you know, it's a, almost a summer peat. Yeah, you get those it's, light fruits and yeah, those dried it's, fruits it's, it's and one of those things it's kind of floral. That, you know, whereas, whereas the... You know, the peat monster may be better around a fire pit kind of thing, whereas the, the peat monster would be good around, you know, go out while you're out, you know, throwing uh, throwing bags or something. Right. I'm just having, having it in, the, in the summer heat. It's brighter. And it's, you know. I, mean, I would absolutely consider it. But yeah. To me, the, the new peat monster, and we'll finish up here in the segment, is it's basically like getting a Laphroaig quarter cask and adding some monkey shoulder to it. It's, it's basically giving you some of that medicinal sweetness to it but diluting it with maybe even some water. Ah, yeah, quarter cool. cask has some sweetness. It, it does. It. it does. But the it monkey is. shoulder gives it a little bit more maltiness maybe to help out. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't even know. But some, something like that. I mean, to me, this screams more Lafroy than anything in the bottle, whereas this screams tons of different things. Yeah. And that, that, that's the difference between the two. Yeah, that brown bottle has tons of different things. Yeah. yeah. All right. So now this is kind of more singular. This one opens you up to... More yeah. complex, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Absolutely. So anyway, so wrapping it up, I think, you know, at the end of the day, should you buy it? I think it's based on your taste and your profile. It's not a bad bottle. Um, I, I think that they... I, I personally think they missed the boat. John missed the boat a little bit from the old one to the new one. It's not bad, but I mean, I definitely prefer the old bottle. Yeah, I mean, it'd be interesting. I would definitely prefer I would love one. to talk to. And did John formulate this one or did one of his other, other I don't blenders know. do that one? I have no idea. It looks like his name's his signature's on the back. So, um, yeah, I, I, I signed I'm, it. I'd be interesting to ask him. And, and we had we had an interview with him um, in New York. <laughs> so we, we've talked to him and respect the, the heck out of the guy. Oh, yeah. Um, so I'd, I'd love doing. to talk to him what, what he was going for with this because, I mean, we've talked to him with about the original the original Spaniard versus the story of the Spaniard and what they they, they are not intended to be the same. He, he changed it for a couple of reasons. And so I'm, I'm assuming he changed it for a couple of reasons here. 
There's got to be a reason yeah. for, from it. I mean, and we're missing it. I mean, I, I hate to say it. We are definitely biased and we're stuck comparing yeah. it. I mean, that's, I did want to, that's why I wanted to hit Brad up because he's never really had this. Unfortunately, yeah. we kind of, you know, sugarcoated it a little bit with him on the tasting here. But yeah. at the end of the day. Hey, we like this better. Do you like this better? Do you better? like this better? I, I, I like that better. <laughs> Good boy. To be Good fair, boy. we should have just let him open it up. Yeah. But anyway, right. Pete Monster, there you go. So, I'm going to take right. this uh, old Pete Monster and Are you use keep, that as my drink. You're going to continue drinking that? Yes, I am. <laughs> so let's move on to the, uh, the main topic tonight, guys. Does ABV matter? And you know what? You know, we talked a little bit about it before the show. And, and I will say that it's a yes or no. It's kind of a trick question. It really it does. Mm -hmm. And um, honestly, there's no better person that I can think to really kind of get us into what we can do with ABV and Dr. Scotch. Is he around? I'll go see if he's around. All right. Who's here. Hey guys, Dr. Scotch here. You know, Andrew gave me the shirt on the way out. The world's okayest <laughs> doctor. Okay I think doctor. doctor. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a doctor, but I play one on YouTube. So oh my gosh. this is where we really get into the depths of what ABV is. So I understand you want to talk about that. Before we get started, Bobby J just sent us a super chat. Cheers, right. Brad, from one newbie to another. Great job tonight. All right, there All you right. go. Thank you, sir. Hey, <laughs> cheers. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. All right, so I'm sorry I interrupted you. So ABV. Why does it matter? What do you yes. got going on? So I did a little research on ABV mm -hmm. and you know, there's a lot of information out there mm -hmm. and depending on who you talk to, depending on where you go. Um, uh, so let's get down to the, the first basic, in, basic information, basic instinct. Um, ABV alcohol by volume, right? Alcohol by volume is half proof, right? So at least in the U S you get, um, 80 proof is 40% ABV. So that's, that's the, the basis of Double what we're doing here. Yep. Why we did that, it's a little bit, um, there's a little bit of history behind that. Originally they said that 100 proof is where when you pour the whiskey on gunpowder it'll ignite. What? Uh, yeah, that, I mean, so that's 100 <laughs> proof. Now the, the weird thing is, that, that's, <laughs> that's I know, it just, it just, it reminds me of something like, hey, y'all watch this. That's, well, so, so that's how, <laughs> my beer. No, right. that's how you knew you were getting full strength whiskey. Yeah, it makes sense. I because get it, if, it's it just funny. if it yeah. wasn't that, it would, and now the weird thing is, it's actually at 57%. So the, the English unit ABV is a little different. It is. Proof is a little different and, than And the, France American. has uh, something, they call it something different too. Yeah. I wrote it down here or something. I, I can't pronounce it there, but. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, gay, what's it? Gay du sac. Yeah, that's yeah. it. But yeah. anyway, yes. Good. So they, I think they have it at. Uh, Standard and atmosphere value, 15 degrees Celsius. Um, okay. So let's go to, I, I did a whiteboard. Okay. It's very hard to read because I'm learning to play with my tablet and a, um, and a pen. So let's start with, um, number one, we hit the alcohol by volume on the top. Let's go down to um, the red area on the left side. So, uh, or on the right side, I'm sorry, 40, so 46%, th there's some standard kind of bottlings. So anything greater than 46%, typically they'll call it a cast strength or an, or an enriched or fortified or something like that. That Those are kind of a specialty category. Okay. Now, 46% is really common because, um, or, you know, 92 proof, uh, because that's where you, that's the kind of the threshold for where they don't have to chill filter it. Right. Um, and what is chill filtering as a, as a reminder? Well, chill filtering is a way to re reduce any um, haze that could occur when you the add color, the cloudiness. It. Yeah, cloudiness. If if a, if a bottle is at forty percent ABV and they haven't chill filtered it, in a cold room it may be cloudy and it's not beautifully elegant as, right. a, as a whiskey. So they so they chill filter for that reason. Now the next level is um, forty three percent, which is many many cases considered export strength, um, which is interesting because you know South Africa. That's the minimum of ABV for whiskey in, in South Africa. It's 43%. Really? So 43% is an international minimum. That there's no country that'll allow whiskey in that um, requires whiskey to be 
or higher than 43% ABV to consider it whiskey. So that's why you'll see that around a lot. That gives, apparently South Africa has a high um, influence in the whiskey, scotch market, whatever. Um, I don't know if that's true. And I don't know the numbers, so that's fair. And then globally, and even Scotland, um, primarily Scotland for, for scotch, 40% 40%. ABV. So, right. I think at one point there was, I heard some, some time back in, I don't know, the 50s or whatever, or 30s, whatever, 30... It was 37%, which was a mistake. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so they put it back up to 40. Yep. So where ABV cares, um, let's let's hit a little bit of how ABV changes. So number one, we'll talk up here from the upper left, roughly 65 to 70% coming off the still. Right. That's almost that's almost always the case. Um, that's where you get the alcohol with enough water content to, to make a good whiskey. Now the key thing is, as you age it, that tends to drop. And up to you know even half a percent per year. Well, and, and actually, then they barrel it. It comes off the still at sixty nine ish. They barrel it typically in Scotland at sixty three and a half. So don't. So if I understand correctly too, that's the first chance they get the, to actually water it down or dilute Correct. it if they want to. It's right from the still. Yeah, cu- coming off the still, that's distillation. They can't affect right. that. Right. But after that, then you can affect the cat. Then you can add water. And and so. You can add water from there or in the cask is another area you can add water to it to bring it down to ABV as well, right? Well, typically, typically what they'll do is they'll vat, they'll, they'll put a bunch of, they'll, they'll take a, a entire um, material off the still, they'll bring it all down to 63.5, and then they'll fill the cask. Okay. So they'll, they'll do like an entire run of whiskey, then they'll bring it to the ABV, and then they'll fill the cask. That makes out. sense. Because mm-hmm. it's a pot still, so they, they bring everything else over. Right. So, um... So the key with that though is if you look in the lower lower right, lower ABV in the barrel. You okay. don't have to go in at 63.5. That's a standard in Scotland that allows them to swap barrels and allows you to share. Um, and, and you know like um, Johnny Walker can pull all the barrels from all their distilleries at 63.5. So it's kind of a consistent process. But um, especially in the U.S., you'll see a lot of lower barrel lower ABV barreling. Because what that actually does is it allows you to age more quickly. Really? The lower the ABV in the barrel, the faster it ages. Now, why is that? Because it, it's more water. It's higher. There's more water in there. And that water will pull the sugars out of the barrel faster. Oh. Michter's uh, is very common for that. They go in at, at about um, like 50... Uh, it's like 103 approved. So they go in at like, a, you know, 52% uh, ABV going into the barrel. That way they can age it faster. They can get more more um, extraction from the barrel in that amount of time, and they can release their whiskey faster. Um, it's really most common in craft distillers because if, you ha- if you're a huge distiller, I've only got so much square footage. But if i got six barrels on the shelf, it's not a big deal. Right. I mean, I put it in at 50% ABV. It, it, I got... I, I will age it to the minimum three years, but I'll it'll taste like a five-year whiskey because I put it in lower ABV and I can afford the floor space for it. Interesting. So, I so that. That, that's a tool that, that okay. a distiller can use to kind of you know wring more out of that barrel faster by just lowering the ABV in the barrel. Now, you get fewer bottles out of that, admittedly. Would it, I, I would imagine it would also affect kind of the profile of the, of the whiskey as of well. Of course it does, yeah. Yeah, it, it does a little bit because, but um, I, I don't know the nuances of how that how that varies. But again, if if I want to get a twelve year, fifteen year old whiskey, I want it at a high ABV. Yeah. Because if I if I'm at fifty percent and it ages faster, it's going to be over oaked by the time I'm twelve or fifteen years. Well, that's I mean that's there. It's it's the game game of time. It's exactly right. It's a game of time. Exactly. Where, how do you want to produce this? What's your quality? How much can you? What's your volume? Lower is faster, but Higher is going to take longer, maybe yield more, and give you more bang for your buck. Yeah, because the, the thing with those 68, you know, if you're barreling at 63.5, um, there is, you know, as it ages, you, you typically in Scotland, it'll reduce ABV over, over time. In the U.S. and bourbon country, it definitely goes faster. So you have, you have a little bit less um, effect there. But um, so in Scotland, you're losing about a half percent ABV per year. So 12 years, you know, you're down 6%, so you're already down to 62. So, you know, a lot of cast strength whiskeys you see will be in that 60, 58 to 62 range because you're losing that ABV. Right. Um, one, one unique thing I saw is you got angel share here. So in Scotland, by law, 
you can lose no more than 2% per year as part of angel share. 2%? Yeah. Now, nope. it's typically less than that, but by law, 2% per year. Huh. I'm guessing that had to do with people that were skimming off the barrel. Right, that makes barrel. sense. Yeah, right? <laughs> like, hey, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah, so, you know, because you, you pay tax when you bottle it. Mm. You don't pay tax when it goes in the barrel. That's one thing too I read earlier too about ABV is is this true is that the higher they barrel the ABV wise the higher the tax as well on top of that. Mm -hmm. So if I if I've got a barrel that you know oh this barrel only yielded you know fifty percent um, of the initial fill I only pay tax on that because the angels took the rest. That's right. Uh, well, maybe they did, or you pulled some out of the Yeah, pot. exactly. You know, pulled a couple liters out per year. Like Glenn kind of teapot, it. maybe? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, the teapot dram kind of thing going right. on. Um, okay, but the key, I guess the key important today is what does it do to the flavor? Yeah, what does it do to the flavor? So that is the most important part of, of why you would have an ABV at different concentration. Okay. So, number one, let's go to the um, upper right with the, in the blue there. Um, one... one um, article I read was talking about if you bottle it, if you barrel it, to, or if you take it to 40% before bottling, you tend to have a sweeter dram. Okay. So that's why your um, Johnny Walkers and your, a lot of your other whiskeys are at 40% because that is a, it's a sweet dram. It's easy to drink. Um, the key is if you bring it to 40% after bottling, number one, you can lose some, it can be hazy. You can lose some body the, and the water is important. So a distiller has very specific um, uh, purification and things that they use for the water. If you're using tap water, oh, yeah. you tend to have um, a worse effect on the whiskey. All the minerals. So, so that's else. why, you know, for a, a drink that you're, you know, easy drinker, you, you barrel or you bottle them at 40 and then it's a good easy to drink. You don't need to add much water to it. It's not going to go hazy when you did it because you've already had to chill filter it. Sure. Um, that's the key. So the real information, though, I found was on the, in the red on the left. So as ABV goes up, this is the flavor that you get. This is the generalized, generalized flavor of what you're going to get. So if you're, if you're at a low ABV, it's going to be soft. You're going to have more florals. You're going to have more sugar. It's going to be well-rounded. It's going to be a, kind of an a easy drinker. Okay. Now, if, the higher you go in ABV, you're going to add spiciness to it. You're going to add bitterness to it. Um, and this is not good for young whiskeys. You're, you're talking about the ABV affecting the flavor, not just the barrel itself. At Correct. This, point. this is this is the bottle that you drink. If you, if you take two whiskeys and you have one at 40 or the same whiskey, you take it at 60% ABV and you, you take this the same purified water, bring it down to 40% ABV and you drink those. These are the flavors that you're gonna, that's going to come out. It's going to kind of influence what you like. Uh, hmm. That's interesting. Um, okay. So there's going to be more aldehydes, which is, are your almonds and vanillas. Those are going to be more prominent in the higher ABV whiskeys. Um, you're also going to have like resins and... Um, uh, can't read your own handwriting. I can't, I can't read my own handwriting there. Um, oh, acetyls and fruit. So, so you're going to have some fruit punches in there. You're going to have resins. You're going to have vanillas that are really going to be really prominent in those higher ABV whiskeys. Okay. As you water them, those flavors become more subtle and the sugarness, sweetness, roundness comes up. That's why you say when you add water, it opens up. Totally. Because those sugars come out. It becomes more round. It becomes softer. And, and those, those harsher kind of punches don't, um, don't always get, get what you need in that. So, so that's kind of the, the, the key to... Um, I know some, some whiskey drinkers... They love their high ABV because they want that punch. They want the spice. They want the, um, the, the powerful flavors coming through. Even though if they, if they um, brought down the ABV, you would kind of soften everything out. But they, they have a strong, palate whiskey, a strong palate for whiskey, and that's what they like. Okay, that makes sense. So Alejandro has a question. So the ABV drops in cool weather, but does it, does it increase in hot weather? It does. So the, the funny thing about that, in, in hot weather, like in, in bourbon country, um, what it does is it actually pressurizes the barrel. And what that does is then it pushes the liquid through the wood. And ethanol is a larger molecule than water. So the water will push out faster than the, um, than the ethanol will. So then as it pushes out, the water evaporates outside the barrel. And 
the alcohol doesn't push out as fast, and so that's why you actually upproof in Bourbon County. So if you're at the top of Rick House in Kentucky, you are going to be upproofing. You every have day. to. Yeah. yeah. Right. It makes sense in different environments like you know India versus Scotland versus Kentucky. Yeah. Bourbon, et exactly. Okay. Yep. All right. Interesting. Well, I don't think we have any more comments. Let's see. I feel like I'm in nursing school again. You're learning a lot over there? Yeah, there's a lot of science, man, I'm telling you. So the, 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 and that's, that's why we bring Dr. Scott to talk through some of that science. So um, in summary, ABV, um, can, oh, one thing left on that slide, we didn't do our project. Oh, yo, you're right, you did. We had a project that we wanted to do. We want to take a whiskey and we want to break it down to 20% ABV. So the key that master blenders will do is that when they are taking cask samples and they're wanting to see what kind of uh, nosing we can get from them, they bring everything down to 20% ABV. I've never done that before, so I figured tonight's the perfect time to do that. And so tastings we, too, right? Don't well, know. and, and a taste, w w I, that's what I wanted to see. Huh. Specifically, they say nosing, but I want, I want to do that as well. So okay. what I've got here is a whiskey. Um, do you remember which one's which? I do. <laughs> so this one <laughs> is a, I always have the problem like, wait a minute, what did I do? Sharpie on well, the, the way I can which. tell is, is um, <laughs> one's more full than the other. So oh, the, okay. these, both of these glasses um, have the same whiskey in them. One is at, at barrel or bottle strength, which is 43% ABV. Mm-hmm. And one is at 20% ABV. And so why don't we talk about what's in here and what the ABV is? Okay, so this is monkey shoulder. Which I'm is familiar a, with that one. Which yeah. is a very, you should know this one. It's mm-hmm. a very common. It's in pretty much every grocery store, liquor store, everything out there. It's it's a really good, we've rated it very high. I think, did we all give it a four? I think we, we did. We gave it pretty high, So yes. for what you're getting out of it, it's a very maltiness, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And yes. it's 40 ABV. Yes. And so these have been sitting for a while. And this one, what I did, I took, an, I took about an ounce of, of whiskey, put it in here. I put an ounce of whiskey in here and then added an ounce plus a little bit. Um, in here to get this at 20% ABV. So we're going to do an experiment. Let's let's nose these first. What's, so what is the goal of this experiment? What, we, what do you what do you what do you smell different? You know, if, if I'm a master blender, why do they take it down 20% ABV? Are you getting more more uh, more nosing notes? Are you getting different notes? What what do you get? So I mean, normally, I mean, and just because or whiskey snobs, I guess now, when you know, when you get to 40 ABV, it's to us, it's like, oh, I can go kind of stuff in there, or if it's got some decency to it. But when you get the higher ABVs, it's usually okay. I got to let it come out a little bit. It's too much alcohol. So I, I would imagine before I even get in here, this 20% is going to be like, I got to really dig for it. My, uh, my thoughts. That, that would be my guess too. But there's a reason that master blenders use. 20% ABV for testing all casts that they go through. And so maybe, maybe our noses aren't, aren't sophisticated enough to pull some of that out. I got malted butter and vanilla. Okay. On, on, on the 40. On the, four, on the 43%. Okay. So if you take the 20% now. On the, this, none of that. <laughs> really? None of that. Um, but... It, it's I can I can tell it's watered down, and well, whether okay. subconscious or but, not. So but. so pull, and, and we watered it with um, one of these uh, Nestle Pure Life purified waters. So it, it's probably not the true purified water that they would use. I, I, I say it. I would say it's a a hint of vanilla. Now I I I don't get nearly the the flavor palette that I had with nose and the, okay. the, the proof. But can you, so number one, what they've done is they've essentially knocked the alcohol portion down so that you're not going to burn your nostrils. It's more, as I get heather and like floral stuff. That's, that's all I'm getting out of that really. No malt hardly at all. Really? Okay. No, you, you know this. I'm yeah, gonna, like I'm this gonna, one, like I've had half I'm, a bottle of this. I'm going to start, so. start with the, with the 20%. Yeah, you go the opposite way versus us. We yep. went with heather? the heavy first. I get a spicy Ooh. vanilla. I'm getting if, plums. If that makes any yeah. sense. And again, a newbie, so, you know. No, that's it's definitely in there. And it, to each his own. That's what's so in there. Admittedly, this weapons. is where the, 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 um, the glass and what you cleaned it with is probably more important because you're... It's true. It's it's more prevalent. I try to hand wash most of my glasses, oh, man, but still. It, does, it smells... Uh, it's not leather, but some light, like, young wood... It smells yeah, delicious. Yeah, it's just like a spicy vanilla. 
So you're 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 yeah. actually getting you started off with the twenty percent. And you're you're getting a little bit more than I got out of it. So I'm getting like I probably burnt my nostrils on the twenty on the one. Well, yeah, you, I'm you not burnt getting, your nostrils on the on the SMWS. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not getting a, as as nice rich flavors out of this as as, as the subtleties of that twenty percent. Uh, yeah, see the alcohol is burning. Oh, yeah, that's, that's totally different. That's interesting. Right. You now you haven't had a drink for a little bit because you've been talking, but so the alcohol is. So totally. to your so to your point, it pulls, it pulls me out. So I, I'm losing the flavors. When you're talk when you're talking about you know smelling this, and obviously you're not smelling this in that capacity to to drink. You're smelling it to try to bypass the alcohol and get behind that. I want to get get through get away from the alcohol, and I want to pull out all the flavors that are in that glass. I would I would think that you'd have to have everything on that same level playing field in order to kind of get to those smells, yeah. because to to what we just did. I can't. I'm so. I, I am already past it. I'm like, you know, I'm you past the point. Out. Yeah, I, I'm getting. I, I want the higher ABV because I, I want those smells I got in there. Whereas the lower one, I'm already like my nose is already expecting that. Yeah. So I do get more maltiness on this, but admittedly, I don't get nearly the um, the subtle nuances of that whiskey coming out as I do at twenty percent. Okay, it, just smell, it smells bland, like it. Well, okay, so you gotta think. It, you gotta think in a in a much subtler tone. So I, you know, I, you, do I, you I get the alcohol. I mean, I get some. I get some earthiness in there. You get flowers. Uh, maybe, maybe a lavender. Yeah. Yeah. I can see I, that. The florals what I got of it, like heathery, and, and I. You're right. I, I I do get the alcohol in here now that I, that I haven't smelt it for a little bit. It's still. Like yeah, even now, though it's not that strong, it's yeah. Now, admittedly, in this scenario, what we're talking through is um, <laughs> a, a blended whiskey, and so it, I would say that if, That's if, true. This was, if this was a single cask, it's probably a better. It, we probably should have done this with an SMWS or something to get a better, you know, a single cask um, analysis as opposed to a kind of a blended. But I'm sure they once they, once they blend it, they bring it down and do the same thing. So they taste it too, right? It's part of the Oh, process. yeah, that's true. I didn't, I didn't taste it. I didn't taste it. I just smelled it. I'll try the 20% version. Mm -hmm. oh, then, I'll, then I'll burn my taste buds. Start with that one first. Start with this guy uh -huh. first. Yeah, see. Boy, that's so subtle. It's very subtle. And, and you know from experience of watering down things, that tastes super watered down. Yeah, here, let me have it. So let me have another taste of that first. I, what I'm going to do, because it's a 20% ABV, you can take a big dram of it and, and kind of let it wash around your you mouth because yeah. it's not going to burn you. That's right. There's actually a rule of thumb, which people debate. You, you basically keep the whiskey in your mouth for every year for a second. Oh, really? Yeah. But I don't know. I can't. There's no way you can do that with some high ABV. No, the mouth thing is like, <laughs> if I've got like a 65% a, a ABV, I'm not keeping it in my mouth that long. <laughs> No, we'll burn it up. Sorry, but with the, but with this twenty percent down to your point, Andrew, you could, mm -hmm. and you could probably get a little bit more flavors out of it. Maybe that's mm. what they do. It's interesting. That is way better with a big mouthful of it. Maybe that's that's actually oh, a, a, an interesting yeah. experiment for a show one day. Is just yeah. to bring like three different ones down and not mm. don't go past mm. twenty and see what just we can get. It, of it. It you get some light fruities. Oh yeah, like some, it's, uh, the maltiness is coming out now. I mean, it's really it's flavorful. almost tropical. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I'm sure there's not pineapple in that, but I get like a, a pineapple tropical kind of. I can of, see that, and you take a big swig and just let it. Yeah, I mean, I was, like, I was chewing on it. Yeah, wash your mouth with it. It's fantastic. That, that that's actually, actually really nice. That's really nice to do. That's Interesting. Yeah, it's like way to try it. What, who, who needs an umbrella when you got that? <laughs> So that's an interesting concept. I've never even thought about doing that before. Because I normally it. I don't want I want to hire, you know. Just, hit it. Let me hit it, yeah. But this is an interesting way to try. I mean, I'm curious in the comments tonight, if you, have you guys tried this? What have, what have you done to kind of go down to 20% or so? And, and, and do you get different flavors? I mean, I, I totally think it completely bypasses the alcohol almost, well, 20%. So, it I mean, it, so you can, you can yeah. get more out of it. But I think you have to start that level. If you start any higher... You're you're kind of screwing yourself. Yeah, and I, and that makes total sense. If you're tasting whiskey all day long, you need that ABV down. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to get drunk. Right? You got to be spitting, yeah, and everything as well. So. Well, it's interesting. So 
Dr. Scotch, good information. So 20%. It is spicy, but we, that's what we showed, that the yeah. higher the ABV, it, the it's more definitely, spicy. It's definitely spicy. I mean, you can get some hints of some dried fruits in there, I think. Um, but that, like you said, I mean, when, when you water it down, it kind of opens up everything where you get rid of that, that alcohol burn, mm -hmm. is what I would call it. It's mm -hmm. not hot when you drink it. And you, you get some more of those nuances of the flavors. And that was actually kind of, like I said, I mean, it was kind of tropical for me. It was, yeah. It's it was really definitely good. interesting. It's I've really never done good. that. So that, that is nice because because now with the 40% ABV, my tongue all burns and I lose, I, I'm blind on the flavors as mm -hmm. well. Very it's, good. It's actually a really interesting topic. That was very cool. it makes you wonder what the hell we've been doing for the last five years. It's like, <laughs> why, we doing it why, wrong? why don't we cut it like 50% every time, you know? I mean, to get all those yeah. different flavors. That's very good. So Whiskey Mystery says, yes, uh, almost all our blinds are all the time are 50% water added. Interesting. See, That's cool. you guys know what you're doing. Yeah, and Eric White's the same way. 20% ABV, about the same level as port and cherry wine. So that's smart. So, you know, it's something that we, we're dummies. We're learning too. It's, it, maybe one of these days we'll do another blind or something different and yeah, just so do nothing between 20s. We'll, we'll have to crack open in some of his uh, SMWS bottles and bring them down to 20% ABV. And the thing is those ones, you can't even drink those straight, fresh out of the bottle. But it'll be interesting to see if um, at 20%, some of those really just blow up with all sorts of weird flavors and that's cool, and it's going to be cool. Well, Dr. Scott, thanks for stopping by tonight. This is a very no good topic, and we'll get back to you, Andrew, in just a second. All right, see you later. the doctor he was great man i mean i learned a lot i, I learned something really cool about the 20 percent lowering abv for tasting and that's i i always i would never think to do that like oh hell no i want at least eight give me ABV. give me the full strength but it was interesting to kind of go down to the, the idea of you know getting past the alcohol and really getting into it's, a, it's almost a different perspective of tasting whiskey in general it is completely different and so so um dr scott was telling me on the way out um <laughs> was he, how, he stopped how, you? How, yeah he stopped me um, and, and how it really gives you a different perspective completely because in many cases, I, I mean, I remember a lot of our whiskeys, um, a lot of our reviews will go through, yeah, there's spiciness to this. You got, you got some alcohol burn on the front and, and then it, it kind of tingles off and you, and, but when I drank, well, when Dr. Scotch <laughs> drank that 20% ABV, there was none of that. It was all the flavors you could pull out and all of the nuances of the malt and the, the heather and the the uh, floral and all that kind of stuff, and it just it just it was a, it was a different experience. So, I recommend each of you try that once. Um, take one of your whiskeys. It doesn't matter which one, and and like whiskey mystery, just the, a, a good enough is fifty percent with water. An ounce, an ounce of whiskey, an ounce of water. Try and use like a, a purified water, or reverse osmosis water. Drink, you know, bottled drinking water, something that doesn't have the chlorine and stuff in it, to try and and with clean glassware. So that's the thing. Don't use dish detergent, or if you have used detergent, exactly. Wash them by hand, water only. Get as much, you know. You of want that to clean it up. Yep. Artificial flavoring and and no and um, scents out of it, and then you do that, and then coat your glass because of coating the glass, I noticed, had a big effect on the on the nose. It gave, because it, because admittedly, it's more subtle. Mm -hmm. with the 20% ABV. So once you get that um, set up, that's really something worth trying. So we've got a few questions that we put together and I'll, <laughs> I'll ask you some of these questions. So, you know, when we, I think Dr. Scott's mentioned a little bit, there's, there's like three major times when you can lower ABV, right? I think he yes. said it was right after still. Yeah, so before you barrel it, you can do it then. You can do it actually in the cask if you want to lower it from what I understand. And then the last one is? Before bottling. Yeah, right, correct. Before bottling, and yeah. then and then um, you and me right now, we can put water to it. Water That's it. Yeah. So other than that, yeah. other, uh, now if you, if you skip the before bottling, then it's cast strength whiskey. Yes, right. Whatever comes out of the cask is whatever you get. That's right. So what about blending? Is there is there any 
ABV rules, regulations about that blending? Can you have, I mean, it, it feels like most blends are usually on the lower scale ABV, 40 or 43. Yeah, and, and that, um, I'm not sure if that is a matter of getting more bottles per barrel or if it's a matter of I'm taking barrels that are three years to 15 years old, they're not gonna be the same ABV I'm gonna bring it all. I'm gonna I'm gonna vat all those barrels together and bring them all down to a certain level to <laughs> to be consistent. No, um, no, Sunday he had to go to the bathroom. So, um, so guys, <laughs> let's let's do this. We've got some glasses up front here. I've oh, got wow, I forgot about something that. I, I kind of put together here. And so, guys, the topic tonight is does ABV matter? And you know, again, I think it doesn't. It doesn't. It depends on who you are. But the experiment I have here, we had one with Dr. Scotch, and we lowered it down to 20% ABV. What I have in front of us here, and I think it'd be kind of cool for each of you guys to go through this. I, I know what's in here. I got it on my phone. I don't remember what the order is. Um, but what I've got is four different bottles, four different ABVs. And what I think the challenge would be kind of cool is if could you take each one of them, talk about your tasting, your nose, et cetera, and give me what you think in order of ABV. And just talk in general, generality of what you get out of each one of them. You know, you don't have to be specific. <laughs> you, you give this challenge to a newbie. That's, that's okay. But right. That's yeah. what's going to be interesting about it. And then what would be kind of fun is, you know, is, is say which one you think is lowest to highest and which one you like best. Okay. And, I, and the reason I want to put this together is because I want to talk about the whiskeys in general once we, de we, once we just determine what they are and why it affects them, whether it's lower ABV or, or higher ABV. Okay. Okay? Yep. So I'm going to start Andrea off with the blue. Blue. All right. So we'll t I'm going to take some notes here. I'm going to start you off with the red. Do I get like a sticky note or a notepad or something? Uh, no, you probably should. You probably deserve that. You know there. what? I got my phone. No, there's a pen. I need a, I need a pen and an eraser. Chalkboard. No, you can't erase it. I have a smart board. Can, can you write on that? Would that work? Absolutely. So I'm right. red. You're you on red right now. All right. So I'm going to try blue. And I'm going to go yellow. Mm. Rich. Nose smells good. So this is this uh, smells like low ABV on the yellow. This feels a little hot, a little warm. But Very we'll sherry, though. <clears throat> Oh. I need a pencil. I can't. I can only read my notes here. Can I just wait until you like give your answers nope. and then I'll, nope. I'll give mine? Nope. This. <laughs> that's why you're here. This is interesting because it, it's. I'm gonna get like totally rookie. Like it's okay. There's no right or wrong answer here. I mean, I'm thinking. So the one thing I will say is. Ooh. Are we drinking there, or there's a, there's a nose ABV and a taste ABV. Like gotcha. you, you can yeah, smell the, something. Like based on what Dr. Scott was saying, your your higher ABVs are going to be you know the, those spicy mm -hmm. higher tones and exactly. And gotcha. so, so that's actually a good segue into maybe what you're getting out of it could actually indicate whether it's a higher ABV or not. Gotcha. Um, and but we are drinking these, yes. Yes, you're drinking. I'm getting a lot of I'm getting a lot of um, alcohol influence on the nose. I'll I'll say that. On the blue, cherried. Yeah, so we've got a comment I asked about blends. I, I don't think, I, correct me if I'm wrong, guys out there, I don't think I've ever seen a blend higher than 43, may, maybe a 46. Um, and I think uh, I was just, Apples. this person out there said 43 was the highest blend he had as well. Yeah. So so you, you've you had, what, what you had the, the blue. you had the blue and you've got sherry, I got apples on the palette. Um, and nose feels a little hot, but when I do the palate, it's not that hot on ABV. What do you think? We're just throwing a number out there. 43 maybe. 43? Ish, okay. Maybe. We'll, All say, right. we'll say 43. And you had the out. red? I had the red. Give me the um, yellow. So yellow. You want anything from me yet? Or? Yeah, go ahead. So what do you got on a nose? And, and, and I mean, the nose, it didn't, it, didn't, it didn't nose like a high ABV. Um, the taste was kind of like a... I don't know what a mid ABV would be, but I'm thinking 46 to like 50. Sure. Somewhere around in there. Um, I definitely had a lot of apple in that one. Um, that, was, that was the most predominant or so, predominant. So what was the ABV? You think it's mid ABV? I'm thinking like 46. And see, I don't know, like. I think that. Again, with me, like ABV is like, I don't know, you know, what's a 43, what's a 46, what's a 48. I'm thinking like, I'm, I'm going ranges. I'm thinking that's probably mid-range, like 40s, 
six forty eight, maybe. The high. I'll, I'll give you a hint. The highest ABV we have out here is fifty, and the lowest is forty. Okay, so I'm gonna. Well, in that case, then if you start me off there, I'm probably gonna go forty five ish. Okay. I got Andrew a lot, I got is a now. Lot, I got a lot of spicy apple off that. Uh, you did the red, right? Okay. Yes, that was red. And Andrew is now onto the yellow. Yeah, I'm talking. I've got mm. rich raisins. Why don't you this? start with the blue? Blue, it's really tasty. You guys can just kind of. Are kind you of doing my this too? Non, yeah, I, kind yes, of my no. non-peated real house. You already know what they are. Though, I right? do, but okay. I forgot the order of them. So I'm drinking green. Who did green? Anybody yet? No. No, that's sweet. <laughs> this smells low ABV. This on the nose. So, this doesn't have this doesn't have as powerful a, a high BV on the nose, but palate, it's it's up there. I'm gonna say it's up there. Okay. And I put that at fifty. Ooh. What's next? Green. Um, have you done green yet? I have not. Man, that's I just did green. I need um, some water. To, that's. I'm not gonna actually say anything because I want you to kind of get your thoughts on it. Wait, what did you just do? You just did blue. I just did blue. Okay. Um. I mean, I, I'm not going to give percentages because I sound like an idiot if I do. Dude, um, I'm the same way. I, I've never been able to pull AVV out. Yeah, and I've watched I'm, a couple I'm of guessing, shows. I'm I mean, that's why I'm here because I've watched okay. a couple of shows. You, it's okay. It's um, okay. Just curiosity. And I have, you know, it's amazing what fifty dollars will do to like get yourself on YouTube. But um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to say I'm on that one on blue. I'm I'm going low ABV. I get a lot of I get a lot of sweetness. I get a lot of it, it's sweet. Like I mean, it, it, it's sugary. It's mapley. It's got. It's not even honey. It's just. It's just a very smooth. I'm, I'm gonna say maple and sugar. So we, mean, we got a few comments here. I think it's yeah. funny. Whiskey Mystery says the highest blend he has 57.3 peat monster. Oh, yeah, that's true. Like just drink technically, peat it's a that blend. was fantastic. It's a yeah. blend. Yes, very good point. Um, and so we've got green looks like a fake Dalmore. <laughs> it does. Interesting. We're, we're going to talk about Dalmore in just a second. Um, or yellow, maybe he says. So yeah, yeah, it is darker in color for sure. Um, I think these guys will be pretty entertaining when I tell them what whiskeys are out here. I got a, I got a red and a blue. So what's up next? You need a yellow. I need a yellow. Okay. And you're doing the green. I think it's low ABV, sweet. There's a little bit of peat to it. It's pretty tasty little whiskey, but I think it's low ABV. Mm, okay. That's kind of red. What, what do you think ABV was? Forty. Forty. Yeah. I'm gonna be an idiot here, but that's okay. What's next? Red. I don't know. You need red? Yeah, I need red. Mm, I like that one actually. Um, and I'll, don't forget to rank them when you're done. Oh. You can remember. Hmm. Uh, fine table. Wow, that one's okay. cool. Oh, all right. The nose on that on the the red one is. The red one's good. What is that? What's it? What are you getting out of the nose? What do you call that? You call that delicious. I'm to be quiet. sugar. You call that delicious. Yeah, it is. It's like it's like um, um, candy floss, cotton candy. So you got nose. cotton candy on the red. On the nose, yeah. Okay. There's so the the nose on this. The ABV on the nose on this is nothing. I'm mm. not getting any of that. Okay. And you're are drinking. you drinking any of these? Yeah, I'm trying some, mm. but I, I kind of know what they are already. So, what do you got on that one? Which one? You're drinking caramel? yellow. I'm drinking yellow. That, lots of caramel in the. Uh, that's that's low. That's forty percent. So maybe the. I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I'm gonna look at a fool here, but that's okay. It's all right. I, I'm enjoying the whiskey, right? These are all good whiskeys. So, mm. um, just know says very high highly recommended the compass box glasgow from buying table yeah that's a good bottle i've had that one i think i may actually no i need to get i like kevin's one. comment which would you say bourbon is good for when friends are over <laughs> can never go wrong with bourbon in my opinion uh yeah being, I, being a rookie scotch drinker Brega, i will say uh there is no dalmore here just putting it out there all right so what am i missing i've got uh, red blue yellow you need green? green? Okay, so the weird, weird, the second sip of this uh, red kind of blew me up on heat, which is weird because the nose has none of that. So, well, what'd you no, say on red no, just now? I'm getting so the second sip I had on it, it the ABV really came up for me. On the on the sip. On, yeah. But 
Not on the nose. No, not okay. much on the nose, okay. no. Oops. Good catch. Thank you, man. I can't like reflexes. <laughs> so it sounds like you like the red one so far. I'm drinking cast strength. That's some WS, so. Ooh. Yeah, there's some meat on that. That's at least 46. It's probably higher than that. See, how do you guys do like 46, like 45? Well, there's, like... there's 43, Experience. 40, and 46 are your kind of de facto's on ABV for most bottles out there. Um, it's kind of the, the, the sweet spot, Ooh, or the wheelhouse yeah, for, for bottlers out there to, to sell. Um, so it's always good to go with those numbers. Once you get past 46, it, it's hit and miss between, you know, 48 to 47 to 51. I mean, you could go all kinds of places. Let me see but the yellow again. Man, guessing, that... anything, guessing 40, 43, and 46 are good guesses no matter what. So, the, the so 40... I'm guessing 46, 43, 46, 43. And a 50. And a 50. <laughs> Somewhere in there, this one's those got me, would not be wrong. This one's, this one's got me confused. <laughs> the the green, the green one. Okay, yeah. Unfortunately, that, that, podcasters, I, I appreciate you guys listening and staying with us. Unfortunately, you can't. If you want to stay, if you want to go on YouTube, look for Scotch for Dummies. You can watch this and kind of uh, listen to it and see the video. But these guys are drinking uh, four different glasses, all different colors. We're trying to talk through them, um, and again, we're trying to discuss you know the ABV factor here, what's involved with it. Why do they, why do they choose to bottle it at this ABV? Um, and based on that, what are we getting out of it? And what's your favorites, etc. So blue. you're almost done. What do you need? Blue? Or are you going back? Going back. So you should be done as well, oh, right? Well, That's, yeah. I mean, because I'm, no, I'm a newbie, it's so it's like really. Stuff. It, it's just what I get an, on the initial. Okay. Um, I need to see. Hang on. I had. It's weird. So now yellow, the blue, I'm getting all wheat on the nose. Yellow higher than red. I need to see the red again and the yellow side by side. Here's Please. red and here's yellow. So I had. That tastes like a bourbon. The weeded bourbon. Weird. So. so there's red. That's that candy. I, I started with the blue. Spiced apple. And I'm getting totally different flavors now in blue after tasting through that. So. I think my palate is blown out. That's okay. But let's we're getting close in time here. Actually, we're a little yeah. over. So, oh, yeah. what, do, what do you guys got on? Just give me roughly like your order and what you think the ABVs are. When you say order, like favorites. What's your favorites? There's no wrong answer Let me here. See the green again. <clears throat> I think my favorite's the yellow. Okay. Um, to me, what I, what I noted, and again, rookie. Uh, I noted that it was a higher ABV than red. Um, I could be wrong there, but I got a lot of uh, I got a lot of spicy notes. I got some plum and maybe a little bit of tannin in there, uh, like a like a tea flavor. Okay, um, that's a that's a good comp. Yeah, yeah, I like the yellow as well. That was my number one. It's got rich. It's got raisins in it. I I put it about forty six percent ABV. I, I agree. I, that's a that's a good whiskey. That that is a very good whiskey. It tastes great. Um, for me, number two, um, <laughs> probably would have been red. Red. Um, I think red was a low ABV. Uh, I got a lot of like spicy apple, like like a, almost like a candied apple, um, and finished very very smooth. It wasn't hot uh, on the nose. Um, had a pretty long finish on the palate, but I got a lot of apple on the end of the palate. Okay. I don't know if I'd put number the red is good. I, I don't know if I'd put it second. It, it's a close second with um, with the green, but I, yeah, I, I might go with you on that because it, I think it's a higher ABV than you think. Because when I when I would take m multiple sips of that, my lips started tingling. And I'm like, wow, there's some there's some alcohol in there. Now it may be y a young whiskey. Or it may be a really high BV whiskey. I don't know which, which one. Yeah. The red one. The red one. Um, so I put the I put that at fifty, but so you, so you think the mm -hmm. red is the highest ABV? I think the the red has the highest alcohol burn on my lips. So yeah, I'm gonna put that at high. Okay. Yeah, what what do you think the highest ABV is? Mm -hmm. I thought yellow was higher than red. Okay. It could be. Um, I had more spice in the in the in the yellow. Okay. Yeah, there is that. Uh, I'll admit, I'll agree. It has more spicy notes to it. Let me cut to the chase. Which which is your favorite overall dram? Yellow. Yellow. And you said yellow, yellow as well. Yeah. Let yeah. me get let me give you guys the answers to what they are and you can tell me which ones you think they are. But that's right. you have a Glen Grant 15 year old 50 ABV. You have a Glendronic 21 year old 
at 48 ABV. You have a Johnny Walker Blue at 40 ABV. And you have a Tullibur Dean 25 year old at 43 ABV. I think Johnny Walker is the red one. Okay. No way. Are you serious? No way. That, to me, that was, well, no, that was that spicy mm. apple one. Maybe it was the blue one. Johnny, Johnny Walker is probably the green. That'd be my guess. I had oak, blackberry, and Johnny Walker blue, that. you said? Correct. Yeah, that's probably Johnny Walker blue. Um, that'd be my guess. Um, so what were the other ones? So let's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write that in there. I'm just going to write ABVs down. So Johnny Walker blue. Tullibardeen, 25-year-old. Tullibardeen. So they're, they're, that's a 43-year ABV. And it's 25 years. You've got um, a Glen Groin 21 year at 48 ABV. 48. And you've got a Glen Grant 15 year old at 50 ABV. Glen, what was the Glen? Glen Grant 15 year old. And what was the ABV? Uh, 50. 50. The reason, guys, so I, I chose these because the reason I chose these, and, I, and hopefully if you're still with us, podcasters, <laughs> and you guys as well on, on YouTube. <laughs> Is okay. there? There's reasons for ABV. At the end of the day, does does ABV matter? Yes, for the most part. Obviously, common sense. The higher ABV, you can add water to it. You can play with it. You get more bang for your buck. Period. Yep. That's a common sense. However, I have personally really come full circle on appreciating lower ABV scotches because I think that there are some really good bottles out there that are presented at a lower ABV for a reason. Like Dalmore King and Alexander's, I think, I'm pretty sure it's 40 ABV, yeah, maybe 43. Yeah, it's fantastic. And, and so they, they get, what you get out of it at 40 ABV is amazing. Now, technically, a lot of them you think can't add water to it, it's gonna hurt it, not necessarily. But here we got four different bottles at different ranges of ABVs, four different unique tastes out of them, you guys both came around to the, the yellow, I believe. It's your favorites. I think the yellow is my favorite, yeah. That is the Glen Dronic 21 year old. That's what is, I that is that the 50%? No. It's 46. Ah, 48 ABV. 48. Okay. So I missed the ABV on that. I put that, that four, one, I put that at 50. It's, I a, put it at 50. it's a venture sherry bomb. So you're okay. going to get that. Is that the, the, that's a 46%? 48. 48, okay. So the interesting one, what I, did you guys like green? Green I had at my third choice because I got some oak, blackberry, and plum in it. Okay. Did you like green? I, it was um, mediocre, I think, to those. Interesting. Is that Johnny so what Blue? do you what do you think the most expensive bottle here it's is? Got to be the Johnny Blue. Um. Well, no, it'd be Teller Dean. That's. A, but which one well, do you think that oh, is? Well, most so ex, I think most expensive is, a, is, a, is yeah. the Blue. This is interesting uh, because blue, it talks yeah. about. Now I'm going with Blue. Number was, Blue is. Probably. Yeah, it was it was the sweetest one. So the blue is a Teller Bredine 25 year old. That's it's what around, I it's, it's, it's around $500. So it was, it was, $500? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> hey, <I, laughs> rookie scores one. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Johnny Walker. No, it was, it was very maple y and wait, sugary. Wait, wait, where did you put that one on your list? I, I, on my list, as far as like how much I enjoyed it, it was number four. Which was four. It was my least. It was my least favorite. Telebrine. Yeah. And, and uh, to be fair, it, it's a good bottle, but I personally don't think it's close to that price range. I, no, no I, I wouldn't. So the I wouldn't even was, consider it. It, it. To me, it no. tasted like taking maple syrup and and sugar <laughs> and just mixing it in your mouth and swallowing it. <laughs> I mean, it, oh, it was very funny. sweet. It was very smooth. Dude, Don't get this me wrong. Is so fun. I but love was, doing these blind challenges. But it was so. It, it was just so sweet. Like to me, I, for a scotch, I want just a little bit of spice, and then I want it to finish sweet or oaky. All depending on what mood, I, mood I'm in. So that I, was just sweet all the way through. I put that one at. Uh, that was the balance between two and three. So the the red and the blue were very close for me. So you've got two choices. Glen Grant is fifty ABV, and then you've got um, Johnny Walker Blue at forty. Which one is which? You've got the red is obviously fifty percent ABV. Well, red red is um, I'm going opposite. I'm going green. green. It's right. Was it, was red, it is, red is a green grant. Okay, yeah. green grant. And then obviously green is left over. That's Johnny Walker Blue. Yeah. So <laughs> so Johnny Walker years. Blue is the second highest price. I well, you know what? I don't know actually. It's, it's around two hundred dollars, guys. What's what's Glen Glen Jordan twenty one? That's probably up there too. Ooh, that's getting there too. So. We've got some good bottles here. The yeah. last one was the uh, Glen Grant 15, 50 ABV. Do you know how much that bottle costs? I have no idea. Any guesses? 
I think I paid 50 bucks for that model, maybe. And which one was that one? The, the, the high the ABV, red. it's red. The red. AB, the red, I had it. At, it's the I cheapest it bottle here. So, did you guys, two. where did you guys rank that one? I ranked it number two. And I think that was my borderline two between two and um, Telberdine and that one. So, did you rank it high because of ABV or did you rank it high because of flavors? Flavors. Flavors. I got a spicy apple to that one. Okay. So, it's, it, at the end of the day, guys, the point of this was it, it was just it's a That's interesting concept a to play into the ABV field. I know we ran over. Thanks for your patience with us tonight. But at the end of the day, oh, did. Did, does ABV matter? I think it does. And it, and it doesn't. It depends it, it, on what yeah, your wheelhouse it's is. Like, it's like it, it does and it doesn't. And if it, it and from what we learned from Doctor Scotch earlier, if ABV is really affecting the the impact on what you're drinking. Lower your ABV a little bit. You open it up to more flavors, and you get rid of that burn, and you can well experience what more you things. want. So, yeah. so you got you said you, earlier you had five different bottles of uh, scotch. You know, you got, I assume you have other bottles of whiskey. Yes. But the key with that is, I'm assuming you are a mood drinker. What yes. mood are you hey, in? Mm -hmm. What your mood is? Yes, I'll pick absolutely. That bottle. If it's a different mood, I'll pick that bottle, and that's exactly the way these whiskeys here would hit a different mood. Exactly. So let me let me sum it up by saying this. So this is, again, I'm in a point about I'm really starting to enjoy some of the lawyer ABVs. When you go to a liquor store, and, and let me ask you specifically because you're kind of new to this. I call you before I go. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but if you didn't, right? and you're looking, I, I, now I I guess it's kind of hard because you, no, you okay. mean you're shopping, you're not sure exactly what you're going right, to buy. Right, right. Do you really look at ABV? I have never in my life, to this day, looked at ABV on any alcohol I have ever bought. And I, I would say that's a fair assessment yes. for the majority of people. Correct. Right? It, it's, the, it's the connoisseurs, people that are more experienced for mm -hmm. some reasons, that get into stuff that understand ABV and what it can do to it, especially in the scotch. I think scotch and higher-end bourbons, yeah. are really, really good. you're going to finesse in that. But at the end for of sure. the day... Does ABV matter? I think it does, but for the most part, probably not. I mean, like you said, it does and it doesn't. It all depends <laughs> on what you're looking for. I mean, yeah, because so you can. It's you debatable. Can take, like, like the beginning of the show, you took a you took a monkey shoulder and you took the ABV from forty to twenty, and you took it from you know kind of oaky and a little spicy to tropical and fruity. Yeah. I mean, so it it all depends on your mood. It all depends on what you're looking for. Um, <laughs> I know I'm going for and it. You, you reached for it. Uh, then, I, would, I would agree. And so, you know, I think... This is we, fun. I, th I think we saw that with, um, with, with age statements. We see that with price. Now, price, quite honestly, I think um, distilleries know the quality of their whiskey and they price it accordingly, whether it be an age statement or not. Because there's some variation there. But between $30... And a hundred dollars. Now the two hundred, three hundred, five hundred dollar bottles is different, kind of a different story. But in that range, the price is generally going to give you an indication of how good that whiskey is. And and it, you're right. Can I, the, I don't know. Well, can I argue depending that, on the brand. I don't know yes, about you can, that. But hold on a second. Okay. As, depending as on the repeat. brand. So some brands are high. McAllen at twenty dollars. Um, yeah. Monkey shoulder, take off. Sure. $40. Oh yeah. Sure. Cheap. So sure. so, but in general, that there there's a line there. Lower price doesn't taste as good, whether it's non age statement or or fifteen year old. So if I got a fifteen year old whiskey, I can get one for a hundred dollars and one for fifty dollars. I will almost bet you that hundred dollar one is going to be better. I mean, to to your point, for the most part, you probably. You but it's also marketing it. geniuses that know that too. I mean, that's just well, kind of what I mean, it is. You, the, the can I? Can I throw just two cents in there? Sure. So to me, it it's what tastes good and and what is your experience? What are you looking for? Like yes, if, that's if, very if, true. If it is, I just mowed my lawn. It's five o'clock. I'm pre dinner. I'm gonna have a naked grouse. Yes. I love that whiskey. It's nice yes. and and it's got a very light, honey, smooth. It, there's yep. It's just it, it's just nice and light. But then when I fire up the chimney or the the fire pit. I'm ready for an Oogadale. That's correct. So you're looking at 40 bucks, 90 bucks. So it, I don't think it's necessarily the price depends on what you're looking for as far as flavor or the quality of the whiskey. I think it honestly depends on what kind of experience you're looking for. 
because the more complex the whiskey is, that's when you start getting into your price ranges. That's correct. And then and maybe that's the better better solution. It's more com it becomes more complex it does, with it, price. Yeah, yeah, the Ugadel it, it's a far more complex whiskey than a Naked Grouse. I mean, who would argue that? Right. But, but and, I, and I would say though that the Dalmor King Alexander is way more complex, but has no peat in it, and so it's a it's a and it's forty ABV different whiskey. Well, then I'd log a rule on 16 if you want to, you know, have your own campfire without even lighting a fire. Just All right. log a rule on 16. We yeah. can go on for hours and stuff, oh, yeah. guys. But thanks for joining us tonight. It was a fun show. We missed Mark and Sean, but you know what? We, we do, got through. But I appreciate Brad, you guys for, having me. Thanks for hanging out with us. Today. Hey, it's been a fun show. I appreciate it, guys. Guys, we'll see you next week. Stay tuned. After party coming up. Take care. Gotcha. Cheers.